Hello and welcome to Mal Makes. Today we're going to be doing a painting based off Katamari Damacy. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. Before every painting, I sketch out what my plan is going to be. So um, here you can see kind of the scene, and now this isn't exactly how I'm going to be doing it, but all of the elements are there. Um, I have the Katamari ball, um, the prince, I'm going to actually put him over here with his hands up on it. Um, I'm going to put this milk container, but I think I'm going to flip it here and kind of do the background differently. Um, and I might change up some of the objects too. Um, and as for the milk container, it looked a lot different in game. The colors are still kind of there and kind of the general shape of like the swoop on the top and the bottom. But there's a lot of Japanese characters on there and it's really hard to see because the game is from PlayStation 2. So I decided to simplify it by putting a little picture of a cow, milk in English, and then writing milk in katakana on it. So there's a few things I'm going to be changing up, but like I said, this is kind of the general idea of what I'm going to do. I re-sketched it on the next page, but I hadn't kind of finished the sketch. It was just kind of a rough draft so I could kind of see where all my elements are going to be laid out. So I'm kind of going to go from this layout, but like some of these colors, and I kind of liked how this one came together better. So I'm taking the best of both sketches and putting them on the canvas. The first thing I need to do is transfer my drawing to the canvas, and my favorite way to do that is to just take a chalk pastel pencil and draw that in because I can erase it with a damp towel. Now there's lots of things you can use. You could use a regular pencil. I just find that um, it kind of shows through my paint. You can erase it as well on canvas, and it's kind of hard to use um, when you're doing it on canvas at least. Um, you could use a watercolor pencil, which I do have and use occasionally. I just prefer the chalk. Um, you shouldn't use anything with oil in it, like crayons or oil pastels. Those won't adhere to the canvas with the paint. They don't really interact well. Um, but like I said, I like to use chalk, so I'm just going to go ahead and start to draw the big things in my painting. I'm not worrying about little things because I'm going to paint over them anyway. Once I'm happy with the drawing, I can go ahead and start painting. Now I'm using some burnt sienna back for this cupboard here, and you'll notice sometimes that you can kind of see these little tiny dots of my canvas through the paint. Now the reason that happens is because this has a texture to it, and when I'm using a thick heavy body paint like I am, it kind of um, traps a bubble and then it'll pop and show some of the canvas through that are um, sitting in the low points of the texture. So if you use more paint, that does tend to help, and sometimes even then that'll happen. Um, and I like to do the two coats of paint, kind of a solid block, and then my detail layer on top, just because if I see a spot I've missed in the detail layer, I can go ahead and kind of just fill that little tiny pinprick of um, canvas in. Um, there's a few other ways you can address that. Um, if you use flow release in your water, so the water I use to kind of rinse my brushes, I just have a drop or two of acrylic flow release, and that kind of helps things adhere to the canvas better, and it kind of prevents that from happening. So you want to make sure you're using enough paint and you're maybe using some flow release. And also um, you want to use a brush that's a bit stiffer because it'll push that paint down into the low part to the canvas so there is no bubbles. Once I'm done with the cabinet, I took all the extra burnt sienna I had and then I mixed up a light gray and mixed the burnt sienna into it. So this is my new color, and I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the table with this. While I'm in between colors, I thought I'd talk about why I've chosen to paint Katamari and kind of my history behind it, um, because it's a different story compared to most other games I've played. Um, in 2005-2006, I was a senior in high school and I was taking Japanese. And we were having a conversation in class with our table mates about what we like to do because we were learning different verbs and different nouns. So I talked about how I like to play video games and my Japanese teacher stopped me and said, you know, what do you play? And I was like, oh, I played Dark Cloud 2 and I was mentioning some of the games I played on the PlayStation 2. He's like, you should try this game called Katamari. And I was like, okay. So when I went to my dad's for the weekend, I rented it at the video store and I played it. And I loved it. It was so different. It was like nothing else I had ever played before. The colors were great and the characters and the music. And it was really, really just fascinating to play when I was 17, 18. So I ended up buying it for myself and I bought We Love Katamari when that came out. And I haven't played a whole lot of the newer ones. I've played some of them, but not like I did the original ones. They weren't quite the same, but I really enjoyed them. 
So moving on to the rest of my colors, I'm gonna have a gray blue here for the wall. And I think I'm gonna paint outside the window just green for now because I'm not sure exactly what my plan is. And there'll be trees or something out there anyway, so green will be just fine. Um, and then I have a little bit of the floor, the baseboard, and then the windowsill. With everything blocked in, I can go ahead and start to add some value, detail, and texture to everything. Now I need to clean up some lines that are not quite straight, like especially on this windowsill here. Um, this blue needs to be more gray. Um, I realized the carpet was the wrong color. It should be carpet and not wood, so I'm changing it to a seafoam green. And I'm going to go ahead and start by painting this in solid seafoam green. And I just have to get around the corner here. And then I'm going to add a little bit of value to it with um, a bit of a darker green just to give it a little bit of shading. Now as I'm filling this in, I'm not worried about going over my lines. That's going to be more important when I do the table and then the baseboard here. But for the texture, I've mixed up kind of a darker version of this color with a bit more black. And then I think I'm just going to tap a little bit of it into the carpet just so it has some detail and isn't flat. The next thing I'm going to work on is the sky up here, and you really can't see much of it on the front of the canvas, you just see a little bit of it. Now the rest of it does continue along the top of the canvas, and if I tilt it down, you might be able to see some more of it. So that's the next thing I'm going to work on, and the reason I've picked that is I'm kind of thinking of the things that are going to be easiest to start with, and then what's going to be easy to cover up my mistakes with. For example, with the carpet, I wanted to do that before I do the baseboard and before I do the table because I could bring some of it on top of the table like this, and then when I do the table, I can just clean up that line and cover that up. The same with the baseboard. Now if I do the wall after I do the window inside here, I can do the wall and then I can clean up the wall and the carpet by doing the baseboard. So I'm kind of thinking what's going to be easiest to paint next and then what's going to be easiest to cover up any mistakes I make like this later. Now when I do the table later, I do have to be careful that I don't go on top of the carpet because I don't want to have to clean that up again because it's already done. But because this line is nice and straight and I'll probably be painting over it nice and straight and not giving it some weird texture like I did the carpet, it should be pretty easy to avoid making that mistake. To fill in the sky, I'm actually going to change it to a lighter blue. So I've mixed up um, some cyan, some titanium white, and then I thought it was too bright so I toned it down a little bit with a little bit of orange. So this is actually going to be my starting sky color and I'm going to start this along the bottom of it which is the part you can see, and then as I finish the top of the sky, it's going to get a bit darker, um, so I'm just going to add some more cyan into it. With this layer done, I let it dry, and now I'm going to go ahead and start to add in some of the values to the trees. And with that, it will be adding some texture based on how I put my brush to the canvas. So I've mixed up a few different lighter greens just to sort of add a variation with trees, just so it doesn't look like a big green blob um, and it looks like individual trees. So I'm going to start with um, the original color I have um, up here mixed with a little bit of white. And I'm just going to start to tap this in for this tree right here. And I started by tapping on the edge because I want the light to be brighter towards the top and then it'll naturally fade out as the paint ends up not on my brush anymore and I can just kind of lightly bring this down so there's not as much paint. And then I'll do another tree that way. Um, maybe there's one over here. The other two greens I have are more of a blue green and then more of a yellow green. So I can kind of use these to bring in other layers too. Then I'm going to mix all three of these colors with even more white so they're a bit lighter. And then I'm just going to use it to add a little bit of highlights on the very tops of these trees. And 
Because the trees are just kind of green blobs and they need something else, I decided to add a few branches that stick out. So I've just mixed up a little bit of a brown here, and I'm just kind of filling in a few branches here and there. The next step is to finish up this wall. Now, it does have some wallpaper and some stripes on that, but the thing I need to do first is add in the value, just like I did for the carpet. So I have a darker version of my wall color, um, and I used the same color with just a little bit of black. And I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of add a little bit of a shadow along this window. Now, it looks kind of messy right now, but I'm just trying to get it on the canvas. And then I'm gonna use my original color here to smooth it out. With the value for the wall done, I can go ahead and start to do the wallpaper. Um, and what I'm going to be using is my T-square just to make sure everything is straight. And then I'm just going to be drawing a series of vertical lines um, with chalk pastel. And that'll sort of be the markers I'm going to use to fill in the wallpaper. My next step is to start to fill in these columns on the wallpaper, and you can see I've tested a few colors on this one. So my color is a bit more blue and a bit more um, white. It's a bit lighter compared to the color I had down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill all of these columns in. The stripes are a good color, but now I need to add a shadow on these three here under the windowsill. So I've mixed up a little bit of a darker grayish blue color, and I want it to be different than what's there already, but I don't want it to be darker. I want it to be a little bit lighter, just because this is dark, and this should be the dark shade, and this is light, so this should be a lighter shade. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of blend it like I did the wall itself, and then this will be done. With the wallpaper done, it's time to start working on the baseboard and the windowsill. Because they're going to be the same colors, it makes the most sense for me to do them at the same time. And because it's going to sit behind the table here, it makes sense for me to do that next. After I finish those, I'm going to go ahead and work on the cabinet and then the table itself. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my T-square here and um, fill in these lines because they've kind of gotten a little lost by doing um, all the other things like the carpet and the wall. So I realized the edge of this cabinet wasn't straight, so I drew a line with my T-square and then I put tape on that same line just to make sure it is straight and I wouldn't mess it up again. And then I went ahead and kind of filled in the extra space right here. Now I'm realizing I don't like the color of this cabinet, so in my sketchbook um, I did a couple tests. I put down the burnt sienna that I have already on the canvas, and then I mixed up a new color and tried that here. I really didn't like either of them, so I thought, oh, how can I fix this? And then I remembered I had this tube of paint, this quinacridone nickel azo gold, and it's very, very, very transparent and glossy, and it's very, very orange, and it reminds me of wood. So I tried painting the full strength paint on top of both colors, and then I tried doing a wash on top of both colors, so it's kind of toned down with some water or some glazing liquid, and I really liked how the full strength paint looked on top of the lighter color I mixed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repaint this with a lighter color, do all the details, all the different drawers and edges of the cabinet, let it dry, and then I'm just going to do kind of a wash of this across the top. While this is drying, I'm going to go ahead and start to work on the windowsill and the baseboard. So on my palette I have Mars Black, Titanium White, and Neutral Gray number 5. And the Neutral Gray is going to kind of be my base color for everything, and I'm going to add the white and the black to it just as I need it to to get lighter or darker. For example, the side of the windowsill here is going to be dark because it's kind of around the side. It's already casting a little bit of a shadow that I did on the wallpaper, so that's going to be darker, whereas the top here is going to be lighter. Now, I'm not just doing straight flat color. I will be adding a little bit of shading to it, otherwise it's going to look kind of flat like a cartoon cutout. So I'm just going to go ahead and start to fill that in.
I've been finishing up the grays in the window and the last thing I have to do is this front part here, but I can't tape that off because all the other paint is wet. So I'm just gonna leave that alone for now and jump over here and work on this. in these colors I'm going to be using some burnt umber and then the burnt sienna that was originally down there to start adding some value to this and I'm just going to kind of lay down the darker color where the shadow is going to be and then kind of do the mid-tone which is the burnt sienna in between it and then the base color and then I'm going to do some highlights on top of the base color and then like I said before after that all dries then we'll put the nickel gold on it and it'll look a lot more like wood. With the cabinet pretty much done, I just need to go ahead and kind of add the nickel gold on top. So I'm just going to be using a stiffer brush for this. I do have a few that are softer, but if I use a stiffer brush, it's going to kind of make lines in the paint and you can kind of see how I've done the wood grain with the lighter color. And I want to use that same direction when I'm applying this. So I'm going to pull it up here. Because I don't have my tape done, I have to be real careful on the edge. You can see how it's kind of turning orange, it's kind of staining the whole thing. And that's only because this paint is so transparent. Um, some other paints that are transparent would be like the phthalo blue, um, that's also really transparent. But I'm just trying to make this gold and not blue. Once I start doing these dresser drawers, I want to make sure I go horizontally this way. Because that's the way this wood grain goes. I've taped off the table, so now I'm going to go ahead and kind of add a new solid coat just to kind of cover up any inconsistencies in the color, and then we'll start adding some value and detail. With my base laid down, it's time to start adding some value and detail. So I have kind of a grayer brown, and then this one is more of a regular brown, but it's lighter. And I'm going to be using both of those to kind of give this some wood texture. Now I'm not adding the green in yet, kind of like I did up here, but I'm going to go ahead and kind of just give it some variation between these two. As I'm doing this, I'm making sure I keep my brush strokes in the same line as the table, and because it is kind of angled, I'm making sure I do go at an angle with it. Otherwise, it won't look right. Um, it needs to kind of line up with the grain, and the grain is going to go along with the table. With my background done, it's time to start filling in details. So just like before, I'm going to draw everything with chalk first, and then begin painting it. So if we go back to my sketch for a minute, you can kind of see some of the things I'm going to be adding. I have the milk container, um, I have the handles I haven't done yet on the cabinet, um, there's going to be a strawberry, the katamari, the prints, and I'm just going to go ahead and start to fill those in first with chalk, and then we'll start blocking in the colors. Most things are drawn in. Um, I didn't draw in the strawberry. Well, I did and then I erased it because I decided that 
I'm not sure where I want it to go. I might want it to go a bit further left just because of the spacing between everything and I can always add it in later. So I finished up the milk jug and I made sure everything was straight. I was really just sketching things out roughly and then I took a ruler and made sure all my lines were perfect. Same with the dice and then this kind of mat I'm going to have here on the table. And then I also used a compass on top of the katamari. And I have these safety compasses, which are not the metal ones with the spikes in them. And I actually like them a lot better because um, if you kind of figure out a spot where you want there to be a circle, you can put your pen inside one of these little holes and spin it around and it'll make a nice circle. And if you want something even smaller, you can either trace these inside here or you can put your pen inside one of these tiny holes and just spin this middle thing. So it's really great, um, it's flexible, you can't stab yourself, and they work really good. The next thing I'm going to do is start to block things in. So just like I filled this in, I'm gonna go ahead and start to fill in all of my objects. And they're not all gonna be filled in white, I just did that because there's the rainbow stripes on top of this, and I wanna make sure all of my colors are nice and bright, and they're not being tinted by something underneath. So that's why that one's white. But for the flower pot, um, if I think about it being kind of a terracotta color, um, and that's how it's going to end up when I'm all the way done. But in the meantime, I'm just going to take some burnt sienna and give it a first coat. Let's love up to make a single star in the sky. I've started to fill things in with white and I've chosen white for the colors I have down already because some things are going to be white and some of the other things are going to be lighter colors like yellow for these stripes and then the orange will be orange and I want to make sure those colors stay nice and bright. I don't want them to get muddied by them being transparent on top of the brown and kind of showing a strange mix of the two. So I'm kind of putting the white down like a primer so I can put the color on top. Now, just like everything else before, I was painting a solid color and then going back over it with detail and value and kind of doing that as a second layer on top. So I'm gonna start by kind of filling in these with their blank base layer and then going ahead and doing everything else on top of them. And as I finish them, I'll jump to the other side and do the same thing. Now, the reason I haven't painted like the whole milk carton white is if I do, I'll start to lose the lines I've drawn in for my details and I won't be able to tell where they are. So I kind of have to work in pieces and jump around through the whole painting. As you can see, I've started to apply some of the yellow to this stripe, and you can kind of see some of the darker spots below it, like some of this um, transparency in here would show up on top of the yellow. Yellow is a very transparent color, and they do sell yellows that are a bit more opaque. I just don't have any of them. So what I'm going to do is give it another coat of white first, and then go back and do the yellow. I really need to finish this mat that everything sits on top of. Just because once it's done, I don't have to worry about it so much and I don't have to worry about painting around things so carefully. But I went ahead and started to mix my light blue that's gonna be the other stripes here. Um, and I didn't put white down because I didn't think I had to with the light blue because there is white in it. But I'm noticing that once I put it on the canvas on top of this brown, it is showing up a bit darker than I had mixed it which is fine, so I think I'm gonna lay it down on all the stripes first, and if I don't think it's bright enough, I'll just do a second coat and that should be plenty. While I'm waiting on this to dry, I can go ahead and jump back up to this flower pot. I've mixed up a new terracotta color, which is burnt sienna with white and a little bit of pyro orange, just because I thought it was too brown and not orange enough. So I'm still thinking this might be a little bit too brown and I want it to be a bit warmer of a color and not so neutral. So I'm gonna play around with it, maybe add some more oranges and some more reds just to get it where I want.
You can see how I've done the shading here. I just added a little bit of black to my terracotta mix and just kind of started on the left and kind of swooped it a little bit to the right. Now the lip of it is going to cast a shadow here on the top part. And then the bottom, I just kind of thought it's going to kind of be behind it, so it's going to kind of go around the bottom. Now it looks like it's floating, and that's okay, because later on I'm going to add a shadow below this. And once all of the table is done, I'm going to add shadows to all of those objects too. I finished filling in the flower pot and I put some dirt in with some Mars Black and Burnt Umber. I want to let it dry because I do want to do some highlights on that dirt. In the meantime, I'm jumping over to the orange here and I mixed up an orange with some Burnt Sienna. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of give it a single coat. You can kind of see it's not super opaque when I paint it on top of the white. So it's definitely going to need two coats before I do the value. The next thing I'm going to work on is this milk jug, because once I get the face done, I can do the side a lot easier. So I've mixed up kind of this um, red-violet color, and I'm going to go ahead and fill that in for the top and the bottom here, and then we can get started on the sides. I added some value to the dirt by just taking a lighter brown and kind of putting it across the top and then blending it towards the bottom. I finished putting in the maroonish color here and then I did a little bit of value on the white. Now when I do my second coat of the maroon, I'm going to add value to that there as well by using a darker version of that with some black in it. Now I'm going to jump back to this orange and give it a second coat of this um, rusty orange color because you can see the first coat did not cover very well. Now with this second coat, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to grab some brighter yellows and some um, more of just the plain burnt sienna to give it some value and texture as I go ahead and do this. Now that's not my last step to do the value and texture, but it's one step towards getting it done. I need to go ahead and block in the prints because I really like how he's been drawn and I don't want to accidentally erase him with my hand while I'm painting. So I'm going to go ahead and block him in and then I think I'm going to jump back to this milk jug and kind of finish some of these parts so I don't have to worry about anything on my canvas getting erased. I think I want to put a plant inside the flower pot, so I'm just going to grab a little bit of white paint and just kind of do two little leaves that come out of the top. Now they are going to wrap around the top of the canvas, but I do want to make sure they're complete and they don't just end where this part of the canvas is. So I've been filling things in and making adjustments. Um, you can see I've finished up the base part of the milk crate. I still have to put my logo and my label on it. And I went ahead and touched up the dice. Now I had looked at it and I had other people look at it and we just were determining something was wrong with it. Like my technique of drawing dice and the perspective was right, but the lines are just a little funky. So we looked at it and fixed it and we tried side by side until it actually looked right. So it's looking better. 
I'm not sure I'm happy with it still, but I'm gonna leave it alone for now and not do anything to it until I decide if I wanna change anything else. Um, I went ahead and put the plant up here. It's still white, so I have to fill that in green. And um, the next thing I need to do is start to fill in these handles. So I originally had traced them with a water bottle cap and they were just too big. So after that, I used one of the caps off my paint tubes and traced that. So they look a lot better smaller if you just think of like how big a drawer should be and how big the handle is. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and fill those in with the burnt umber color and that's the dark color I have in here. And then I'm just gonna use a little bit of burnt sienna to bring in a little bit of highlighting on them. The other trick I have for these handles, as you can see, I've drawn a straight line. I used my T-square to do that, and then I just made sure I lined up each one of the paint caps with that line so they're all in a row. To put the texture on the orange, I'm just using all the colors that are in there already and just doing these tiny little dots. So I've done the burnt sienna already and now I'm going to take some of my orange and mix it into the burnt sienna, just so it's a little bit in between both. And then I'm just gonna do some more dots with this color. And I'm just gonna kind of try and blend them a little bit until I get all the way to yellow and then I'm just gonna do a touch of highlight with a light yellow on top. I'm letting the orange dry before I do the stem, so I'm gonna jump back to the milk carton and start to draw in the label. Now on the label, um, I'm gonna have a little bit of a cow here. I was gonna write milk in English and then milk in katakana. To fill this in, I'm just using a paint marker, and this is just an empty paint marker I filled with the liquid black that I keep. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write in all of these things. To fill in the katamari, I'm doing the rings first, and then I'm gonna put all of the little bumps on them, and then finish filling those in. I finished touching up the dice with the value, and now I'm just adding the um, number values on the sides. So I'm just using a little brush and some number five neutral gray, and filling in the dots. All of the colors on the Katamari are going to be kind of a pastel version of themselves. So I've mixed up an orange and then I mixed it into some white to make it a lot lighter. And then I'm just going to go ahead and start to fill these in. Now the base color I'm just going to kind of fill in. You can see it's kind of showing the white through it. So it will need a second coat. And when I do that second coat I'm going to be using some of the Mars Black to add value. The first ring is done, so it's time to move on to the second. And like I said, everything is a pastel version of itself. So I have a pastel yellow and I use titanium white and then just my primary yellow to make it. Now I'm going to be working on putting the bumps on the katamari. So I'm just taking my chalk and kind of figuring out where I want them to be, and then just kind of sketching them in roughly. I've drawn in all the knobs for the katamari, and I kind of thought about the midpoint of my circle, the center point, and um, all of these kind of radiating outwards, and that's kind of how I placed them. Now what I need to do next, and I probably should have done it before I did this drawing, is I need to add the value for the sphere itself before all the knobs get in there. So I've kind of drawn a little bit of a crescent moon down here and a little bit of a circle here. So this is going to be where my shadow starts coming in and this is where the highlight's going to be in. 
Now, all of the knobs also cast shadows onto the sphere, so I think I'm just going to draw a little bit of those. So there should be like a little bit of a shadow here, and maybe a little bit down here. And then I'm just going to kind of add in that value as I'm doing the rest of the value. Now for each of these colors to add in the highlights and the shadows, I still have them all on my palette and then I'm just going to mix each of them with a little bit of white to make them lighter for where the highlights are, and then just a touch of black to make them darker for the shadows. I'm just going color by color and mixing all of my shades. So I'm just going to take this one and kind of just fill in up to my chalk line. And then I'm just going to take the original color and kind of blend them together a little bit. To fill in these knobs, I've mixed up a few purples. I have this dark one here, which is primary magenta, primary cyan, and just a touch of titanium white, because otherwise it's too dark to even tell it's purple. And then I just added more white to make my medium, and then even more white to make the lightest one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give these a single coat first, just like I did the original part of the Katamari, and then I'll give them a second coat with their value. I went ahead and drew some details on the prints, so it's time to start filling that in. I'm going to be using Titan Buff for his face, and then just using some magenta as I get closer to his chin, just to kind of give a shadow and warm it up. For all of the green, I think I'm going to be using this Chromium Oxide Green, but it might be a bit too green and needs to be a bit more yellow, so I'm going to add some yellow to my palette, just in case if I put this on I find out it's too green. I finished filling in the green for the prints, but I think it's a bit too dark and it's not quite yellow enough. So I'm gonna let that dry and in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and start to fill in his legs. And I'm gonna be using the same colors I was using for the knobs on the Katamari, just because it's really similar anyway. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and very carefully fill these in and add some value. As I'm filling in the small parts, I'm adding some value. Now for the legs, I used the medium purple, but used the dark color for the shadow, and I kind of just did that underneath the top of the skirt. And then for this antenna, I filled it in with some cadmium yellow, and now I'm just using the same orange I have here to bring in some value from the bottom. For these last two rings of color on his head, um, I kind of mixed up a new green one with more blue in it, but it was way too bright, so if it's too bright, sometimes you can add some gray to make it a little duller. So that really helped, and now I'm just going to go ahead and fill these in, and still use value to make sure it gets darker along the bottom. And then I just have a few more touch-ups, like he has a gold rim around his face, so I'm going to fill that in, and then we'll start working on his facial features. For the frame around his face, I just used a white paint marker to mark it in, and once it dries, I'm just going to go over it with some cadmium yellow. To fill in the face, I'm going to use a little bit of cadmium red for the mouth, and it's just kind of a little rectangle, so I'm just going to go ahead and mark this in. 
As I keep working on the face, I'm just gonna be using the colors that I had on the Katamari and kind of just mixing some together to make them a little bit darker or a little bit lighter. So for the nose, I have a little bit of that orange that I have on there. And I'm just gonna very, very carefully start to fill it in. To fill in the eyes, I'm gonna use a liquid black because I find it's a lot smoother to put it on the canvas, especially when I'm doing something so tiny. Earlier on, I went ahead and drew in the shadows for all the objects using chalk pastel, but now I'm going to fill them in with a liquid shading gray. Now this is basically what I just used on the eyes here, except it's transparent. So you can build up layers and layers and layers of it to make things darker. So I'm gonna start by putting one layer on each of the objects to give them some shadow. Otherwise it kind of looks like they're all floating. To apply this on the canvas, I'm just gonna be using a soft brush. And um, some of my brushes are a bit stiffer when I bend them back like this, they really snap. This one is a bit softer and it's a lot better for applying paint like this. And we're done! We have the prints from Katamari Damashi. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a print or a poster or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.